Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivas and one of the beautiful things about my practice in the ketogenic uh, carbohydrate addiction space is how we've transitioned. Years ago it was primarily about obesity and now over 60% of my patients, 100% of my patients pretty much, have or have had insulin resistance as a problem. But about 60% of my practice now is working with patients with diabetes of all kinds and a few years ago, we developed a, uh, a part of our practice uh, called New Era Diabetes Solutions. And it really is a new approach to the treatment of type 2 diabetes. And we treat type 1, we treat type 2, we pre treat prediabetes, uh, insulin resistance, and we also treat gestational diabetes. But I really want to focus a little bit on the biologic understanding of a couple of concepts that relate to this word diabetes. And really, what is diabetes? Diabetes of any kind, insulin resistance diabetes of any kind, really means that the blood sugar levels have reached on a chronic basis, not just the spikes, but on a chronic basis, have been elevated to the point that they cause harm to the cells that line the blood vessels and the cells that live inside the blood vessels. So that your elevated blood sugar levels can be toxic within the bloodstream. That's diabetes. Diabetes is the consequence of chronic excessive toxic blood sugar. So once you understand it that way, we understand that the cellular elements in the bloodstream are those that float around, the platelets, the uh, white blood cells, and the red blood cells. And when the red blood cells get damaged, we call that hemoglobin A1C, which is the measure of diabetes. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, that's what it is. It's a cellular damage within the bloodstream of your red blood cells. And they don't function that well. However, sugar also activates platelets. And platelets become a little sticky and become pro-inflammatory. Come back to that in a second. And then they also, sugar also activates the immune cells, the leukocytes, the neutrophils, the macrophages that are within that blood vascular space. So your immune system is hyperactive. And if your immune system is hyperactive, sometimes it makes mistakes. Mistakes. So your immune system is there to help you to deal with foreign threats. Think about the immune system as the military system. The policemen in the military that are there to deal with external and internal threats. And we call those threats inflammation. Okay? And sometimes when that system is really ramped up, think about a really authoritarian police state. Sometimes that ramped up immune system overreacts or reacts by mistake to a part of your own body. And that, folks, is called autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease. So when those immune cells cross-react and they think that an internal threat is really a foreign threat, and they ramp up and they create that inflammatory cascade, which is where the soldiers go in and bomb the hell out of an, uh, something that's supposed to be causing a problem, but it happens to be your own body, that's a problem. So, for example, gluten that comes with a lot of carbohydrates. When gluten gets in your intestine, gets in your system, the body overreacts to that gluten, but it cross-reacts, and now it causes an autoimmune disease. So elevated levels of sugar create that elevated activity of your immune system. You can measure that with your black blood cell count. So all the boys are going, rrr, rrr, rrr. they're all hyperactive, and then they can overreact to foreign material, or they can mistake normal body material for foreign material and overreact to it, we call that autoimmune disease. But the other place where that immune system happens is the other cells in the, in the bloodstream are the cells that line the blood vessels, the endothelial cells, and when they get exposed to too much sugar, they get damaged, they swell up, and they break apart and they become sticky on their surface. Well, those sticky platelets stick to the endothelial cells, stick to the gaps between them, cause clotting, and you get that inflammatory cascade that then sucks in lipids and other things. So you get this inflammatory clot causing a blood clot. That's diabetes, folks. 
whether it plugs up that blood vessel or whether the blood flows through, that's diabetes. That's diabetes. So diabetes, the, the new era management of diabetes, to understand, to understand that the problem is elevated, chronically elevated blood sugar levels. And what's a normal blood sugar? A normal fasting blood sugar is between 83 and 85 milligrams per deciliter. Between 83 to 85 milligrams per deciliter. Then so once your blood sugar is, is chronically above 100, that's where the damage starts happening. And we measure that with an elevation in A1C, but you've got this inflammatory cascade, you've got this endothelial cell damage, and that is what's killing people with diabetes. Heart attacks, strokes, but every organ gets damaged. So, but let's step back to the management of diabetes, and here's how bizarre it is. So, the biggest fundamental change in belief system is this, that People who treat diabetes erroneously and actually make it worse, in my opinion, by keeping it going, are people that believe that carbohydrates are necessary as a consumable for human energy requirement. So if you believe that carbohydrates are fundamental to the human diet, then you have to eat carbohydrates, but those very carbohydrates cause your blood sugar to go up, so now they have to give you a whole bunch of medications to bring those blood sugars down. But instead of looking at the blood sugar, they, they manage with a mathematical formula the carbohydrates you're eating. So if I use insulin, I'm using this amount of insulin to control this amount of carbohydrate to get the carbohydrates shoved out of your blood vessels into your cells, where they're going to be toxic in any case. A really, really very poorly understood, mismanaged uh, form of diabetes management is to eat carbohydrates and then shove them outside of the blood vessel somewhere where magically they don't cause harm. Of course they cause harm. But that's a different video. If you understand that the problem here is elevated blood sugar, and if you understand one other piece, that the human body does not need you to consume carbohydrates because the liver is very good at making carbohydrates, the first step to diabetes management is to get rid of carbohydrates in your diet. The problem then is that by the time you get to that point, whether you're a type 1 or a type 2, your body is resistant to that insulin. So now you're sitting with a very high blood sugar. And what does insulin resistance mean? It means that when you shove that sugar, that excess sugar into your cells, it damages the cells. Which is exactly what those diabetic doctors out there are trying to do. Feed you carbohydrates and then shove them to your cells. Look, his blood sugar is better. They're perseverating the damage. They're causing more insulin resistance by using a glycemic index. How can that be good for you? But what happens is that sugar then gets shoved into the cells and it damages the cells. So what the cells do to protect themselves is they shut the front door. They phosphorylate the insulin receptors. They block entry of sugar from the bloodstream into the cells. And then your blood sugar goes up. The other way the cells protect themselves is to turn the sugar into fat so you become obese. But if the, cells, if the sugar is not getting into the cells, that doesn't happen to that extent. So now your blood sugar is elevated. So your body produces more insulin to try to shove it in there, but eventually you can't produce more insulin, so your blood sugar goes up. But I'm not eating carbohydrates. Why is my blood sugar not coming down? And the reason your blood sugar is not coming down is because the paradox is that your liver is shoving sugar in excess into your blood. So why the hell is my liver doing that? What's wrong with my liver? Why is my liver trying to kill me? And here's why, folks. And this is a fundamentally important thing to understand. Insulin, the hormone that gets sugar from the bloodstream into the cells, insulin gets released from the pancreas when your intestinal and then your systemic blood sugar goes up. So think about this. Insulin gets produced by the beta cells in the pancreas. And those beta cells are seeing blood, not from your gut, but the way the blood flows is, let's say you've, you've eaten some sugar. The sugar goes into your gut blood system and goes directly from the gut blood system to the liver. The liver extracts some, stores some as glycogen, turns it into fat. Then the rest spills over into your um, portal, into your hepatic vein that goes straight to the heart. Doesn't see any other tissues, goes straight to the heart. Little short vessel right here in, the, in between the liver and the heart. 
<clears throat> and then from the heart, it goes to the lungs. So the lungs, after the liver, the lungs see the highest concentration of sugar in the body. And they use some of that sugar. The rest of the blood then goes back to the heart through the pulmonary system. And then from the heart, it goes to the rest of the body where the body uses that sugar. And that level of sugar is what the pancreas sees. And if that blood sugar is slightly elevated, it re the pancreas releases insulin. And insulin comes out in the form of C-peptide, goes into the portal venous system. The same system by which sugar goes from the gut to the liver. And that insulin goes straight to the liver. All of it goes to the liver. The liver uses a huge amount of insulin. Then the rest goes into the heart to the lungs. So the lungs use some of that insulin. And then the remainder of the insulin goes to the body. And only once the insulin has gone through the entire body, does it come back into the veins, which is the furthest point from the pancreas. And that's where we measure the insulin level. That's why we measure insulin and C-peptide. But that's also where we measure blood glucose. Okay, But it's the lowest level of insulin in the body. And it should be the lowest level of sugar in the human body. Think about that. Venous blood sugar and venous insulin is the lowest amount in the human body. Hmm. Okay. So, insulin then gets released based upon primarily... We're going to take GLP and some of those hormones out of the equation for a second. Insulin gets, respond, uh, gets released in response to elevated blood sugar. And insulin's job is to get the sugar out of the bloodstream. And usually it's pretty good at that. However, if your blood sugar is low, insulin should get switched off. Insulin does get switched off when your sugar is low. Okay? But, and here's the, the, the new bit of information. If your blood sugar is low, that's not a good thing. Your body needs sugar. And we used to think the glucagon, the molecule that now causes glycogen release, sugar from glycogen stored in the liver, and gluconeogenesis, the new production of sugar from, from glycerol fat and from protein, the glucagon sensed a drop in your blood sugar. And when your insulin level goes down, it's true that insulin levels do control glucagon at the, in the pancreas. But here's the interesting thing, folks. <clears throat> glucagon is not released in response to blood sugar. Glucagon is released in response to intracellular sugar levels. To the amount of sugar inside of the alpha cells in the pancreas. So, under normal circumstances, under healthy circumstances, blood sugar goes up, insulin gets released, insulin shoves that sugar into the cells, and glucagon uh, um, does not get released because the, blood sugar, the sugar inside of the glucagon releasing cell is high. And then insulin clears the sugar from the bloodstream, the insulin levels start to go down, and the level of sugar in the glycogen cells is low, so now they release glycogen. And then your liver releases sugar into the bloodstream, which causes the blood sugar to go up, which causes your insulin level to go up and your glycogen low. That's normal. But when you are insulin resistant, when your cells have shut the front door, now the sugar, which is high in the bloodstream and triggering insulin production, doesn't get into that glucagon cell. So the paradox is that the glucagon cell says, oh my God, I'm low, I'm, my body's low in sugar, because it doesn't see the blood sugar, it just sees the sugar inside of the cell. And glucagon then gets released on top of insulin. So now you've got, instead of the two being yin and yang, they're both elevated. And glucagon is causing your liver to pour sugar into your bloodstream, despite the fact that your blood sugars are low. And then there's this huge gradient between your blood sugar and your intracellular sugar. And the cells are shutting the front door even more, even more, making type 2 diabetes even worse. And there's this flood of sugar, even if you're not eating it, into your bloodstream, even under fasting conditions. And there's this huge gradient, this mismatch between blood sugar and intracellular sugar that's now low. So you go into ketosis, it's called diabetic ketoacidosis. So think about that, folks. 
So if we're gonna treat type two diabetes, which is, that has already happened, you've got insulin levels high, insulin resistance, and glucagon is high, and we measure glucagon, very, very few doctors out there measure glucagon, I do it on every patient when we, can, when we can get the insurance companies to pay for it. But we see the paradox that they're both elevated. Blood sugar's high, insulin's high, glucagon's high, but they're, glucagon, they're insulin resistant. So the way we have to treat that, we've got to bring the blood sugar down. We've got to bring the blood sugar down so that the cells open the front door and allow some of that sugar in. We've got to force it in at first to switch off glucagon. We've got to force the sugar into the cells to bring up the intracellular sugar level so that your blood sugar comes down. And then we have to use medication to shut the damn liver off to stop producing more sugar into the bloodstream. So how do we do that? Number one, don't eat the carbohydrates. Number two, we use a medication called metformin. And metformin, we still a little bit poorly understood, but metformin blocks or reduces the liver's production of and release of sugar into the bloodstream into an already elevated blood sugar. And then the next way we do that, and in our program, this is what we do transiently for a little while, is to use ways to force the blood sugar down. And the best way to do that is to use insulin, short acting or long acting insulin or possibly a few drugs that whack the pancreas to produce more insulin while we're shutting down glucagon. But that doesn't work as well. So we typically use insulin to force that sugar into the cells to bring your blood sugar down. And it doesn't matter how much insulin we use to bring that blood sugar down, but once that blood sugar is down and your intracellular sugar is going up and your blood sugar is down and that gradient is level, over the course of a few months, the insulin receptors, instead of being blocked, become dephosphorylated. The, ins the, the uh, receptor number goes up and you become insulin sensitive. And as you become insulin sensitive, we can now bring your insulin dosing down and get you off that medication. We leave you on metformin and eventually we can even stop the metformin. That's how we put type 2 diabetes into remission, folks. And that, folks, is a new approach to type 2 diabetes management. We do not use the glycemic index. And if you are interested in getting your diabetes into remission, using a CGM, using insulin, CGM measures your blood sugar continuously. And using powerful drugs to drop that blood sugar, to flatten that gradient, so that the blood sugar is not damaging your blood vessels, causing the damaging effect of diabetes, but more importantly, allowing your cells to open the front door to get rid of your type 2 diabetes, whether you're a type 1 or not. Yeah, type 1's can have type 2 too. That's how we manage diabetes. And if you're interested in that, 60% of my patients are diabetic. We can help you to manage that to the point of remission. Give us a shout. 561-517-0642. But we have to change our way of thinking about diabetes and understand where it's coming from. I hope this helps. I hope this helps. Give us a shout. Leave some comments down below. Please leave the comments below. Yell and scream and shout at me that I'm an idiot if you disagree with me. But don't be a troll. I like my trolls. I love my trolls. They keep me honest. But give me meaningful feedback. Give me meaningful feedback so I can improve the quality and improve the science in these videos. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. Give us a shout.